hello. We are back for a, another episode of Wading Through Deep Waters. Um, I have my husband with me today. We are going to try something different. He's going to give a little bit of a testimony of how God provided when we were on our way to Europe, when we went out there for the mission trip and for one of the runs. Um, he's going to share that and we're going to do we're going to do a Bible study together while for um, one of the podcasts and we'll see how this goes. This is something that was put on my heart a couple of weeks ago and just been praying and seeing how God would move and get us situated with it. So before we get started, I'm going to let him go ahead and open us up in prayer before we go any further. Lord, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you put your hands on us today as we go through this study. I pray that you show us what you want us to talk about. Give us the word, Lord, and that we will be a mouthpiece for you and not a stumbling block, Lord. I pray that somebody will be will be able to get something from this and encourage someone else to be able to start studying with their family and with their wives. Lord, we love you. We praise you. I want to thank you so much for all your many blessings. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to be covering some things that is most people just sort of skim over. Um, I'm, we're going to be looking at money and financial provision. Um, and before we really dive into it and he share, I'm going to let him share his testimony first about how God provided financially for us to get to Europe when it looked like there is no possible way that that was going to work. Um, I want you, uh, there are two names of God that we find in the Bible that I wanted to bring up while we're talking about financial provision, and it is the name El Shaddai, and it means the God who is sufficient for the needs of his people, and you have Jehovah Jireh, which is the Lord our provider. I want you to think about who God really is and who and who he says he is and who he is to you. And how he has provided every single need you've ever had while Logan's given his testimony. And um, I'll let you go ahead and take it away. All righty. So um, we were at an event. This is about, this is the end of 2022. We were at a uh, our Thunder Beach run for the club. And... Uh, the Lord put it on our hearts to start to go overseas, to start doing a ministry of some sort or to just get over there. That's all it was. And we started praying and we was thinking Europe. And then uh, the run card came out for the club and uh, we saw it and we started praying over the run card. And Europe was the one that stuck out to us. So that's what we, we decided to put on. We were led to go to. We, uh, we started to try to get our finances right. And at the time, it was, it, was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good for us at that time. We were we were doing really well for ourselves. And the Lord put on my heart to sell one of my guns. The uh, Now, this gun is probably one of the best guns I've ever had. I dumped a lot of money into it. It was a different time of my life, different chapter of my life. And uh, I was nowhere near where I am now, spiritually. I was pretty much spiritually dead at the time when I was working on getting this gun and building it. But that was my pride. That was my baby. That was everything to me. So uh, I put it out to sell for exactly what I had in it. And not many people can just fork off that kind of money. And uh, it went, I put it out and nothing hit on it. A lot of people just talked. You didn't just put it out. You struggled with that for a while before you actually put it up for sale. You didn't want to sell that thing. Yeah, I basically said no. I was like, not sell this gun. This is my baby. We'll find another way. If I have to get another job, so be it. <laughs> and we struggled for a good little I struggled for a good little bit. I'll use that word I a lot during this testimony because that's what, what it was. It was all my doings. So... We get to uh, GS Warcon and we're praying and we're man. We had an epic time on learning what spiritual warfare was and getting into that and getting to the understanding of spiritual warfare. And uh, the Lord just solidified us going to Europe, and they kind of put things in gear for us. We was like, all right, passports, let's start moving on this. 
So we got them going, and that gun came up again. It's like, all right. I finally put it up. I put it up for what I asked for, and uh, nothing happened. So we're moving on. And uh, from February to May, so we was leaving for Europe in May. February to May was like a desert for our finances. It just completely bombed out. Everything wrecked. My wife lost her job. She had high promises from a job she was working at. And it all fell through, which sucked. And that, and not only did it fall through, is I was promised a certain amount, and it was nowhere near what we were told we were going to have. And that is exactly what we were planning on using to pay to live on in Europe while we were over there for the two weeks. It was about two thousand dollars, and she got ten percent of that. I had two hundred dollars. <laughs> so, that wasn't helping nothing. No. So, I was like, all right. So I dropped the price of the gun a little bit for closer towards the time. But the whole time, man, we were struggling trying to figure out things. You know, we we found a way to get the plane tickets. Um, we used an app to get that online, basically a loan for it. So we got loan. And um, while we was in the GS WarCon, we got to where we were put on our hearts to go to Paris as well, to move into... Yeah. Um, France, you know, a spiritual mapping we was we were led to go over there to to pray for the club to move into that direction. And that was just something that it was me and her, nothing the club sanctioned or anything no. like that. It was just what we felt. That's what the Lord put on both of our hearts. And it's crazy how he does that <laughs> because I'll be sitting there thinking on something and praying about it and be like, Hey Tasha, what do you think about this? And she'll like, Hey, funny thing <laughs> is it's exactly what the Lord was telling me too. So I was like, dang it. All right, guess we're going to freaking Paris. Let's do this. So I was like, all right, Lord. If, if if it's God's will, he'll find a way to to confirm that. Yeah. Whether it's through his word or through somebody else or through a quote unquote circumstance. Prime pan to the head is my way of saying it. Yeah. Hard, hard times. So he he he'll He'll find a way to get your attention and show you that's exactly what he wanted you to do to begin with. Yes. Yes, he will. Constantly. So, uh, and that's how I learned. I'm horrible at this. I'm horrible at listening. <laughs> and it's usually the harshest of ways of telling me is how I like, oh, I see what you're saying now. <laughs> I'm bad at that. Anyhow. So, we're allowed to go to France. So, we're like, all right, plane tickets. Let's figure this out. So, um. I'm an extreme planner. I love to overthink every situation, plan out every single detail. There's nothing wrong in that until you, unless you take pride in it and it obsesses you. And when you sit there and put all your time into it, which I did. So you were driving me nuts with it. <laughs> yeah. That's not normally the way it goes. That's right. So. We figured out that it would be cheaper to fly at the time. It would be cheaper to fly into London and then take the Eurostar to Paris. Well, I didn't know a couple of things because <laughs> it's in my hands and I'm the one doing it. It was not cheaper by no means. And uh, we get about, good Lord, um, not even a month before the the run or the time to go to fly over there. And I'll start procrastinating. And uh, I was like, all right, let's go ahead and get the tickets for the Euro for the train. In my mind, I was thinking it was only going to be like 200 bucks for both of us to take a train ride. Mm -mm. Nope. So we're, like I said, financial desert. We are wrecked. We are ramen noodle specials and we are negative. We're check to check. And by the time my new check hits, it is paying off the overcharges from the previous check. And so. I was trying to find every house to clean, every any kind of side job I could do. I was going and cutting people's grass. I was doing anything that I could that. to bring in extra income. Not just, yeah, we were tight for money, but God had called us. It wasn't just we wanted to go to Europe. Yep. God had called us to go over there. We wanted to make sure that we did everything that that we could to make sure that we were doing exactly what he told us to do. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, you know, it seems to me to sit at the house and do nothing. I don't want to go anywhere. 
I don't like doing much traveling on that end of it. So this is completely out of my comfort zone, out of my my wheelhouse, so yeah. to say. So we're about three weeks before we go there, and I decided to go ahead and get the tickets. Well, it was about eight hundred dollars for the tickets round trip. I died. I was already, <laughs> I was already hurting. I was like, no, I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to get the ho you know, flow the hotels, did all that. I got that off of a, one of the apps and Experian app how I got when I bought the plane, I got the hotel ticket at the same time. So it was a little package deal. And that's dead. That's what that was. And uh so we're like, all right, God we doing it. We're being obedient. We're sitting there doing it. Let's why well, why ain't we getting nothing coming in? Why ain't we getting everything going? And then the Eurostar hit me. I was like, oh God. Than another thousand dollar trip, so I ended up putting that on a different app. So I'm, I'm spreading debt crazily. I mean, it's insane on how everything is. Then we get the week of the week of the tr of the trip before we get on the plane. It's Monday, and I reach out to the guys over there in Europe. It's like, all right, just want to nail down the final things. I said, um, best way to travel. In there is in London is get on the tube subway system. It's actually phenomenal. And in Paris, the best way to do it is Uber, which it was, but the people are crazy. Jokers. <laughs> it's an indie car race. It's ridiculous. Another story. But that Monday I call and he's like, Yeah, you won't have to get a train to the event, which is basically Scotland. So that's like five hundred something miles from London. I'm like, cool, train ticket, no big deal. It can't be as expensive as a Eurostar. It's a regular train. It was worse. <laughs> <laughs> it was worse. So I'm sitting there, I'm looking at it, and I pull it up. So on top of that weekend that we're going, there's a strike. So the only rails that you can use are completely maxed out. Barely found, I found, found one with two tickets on it. That was a thousand dollars round trip yeah. to London, all the way up there to Appleby and back. Good lord, I'm sitting there, I'm sweating. I got three hundred dollars in my account. Yeah. This is the week for the ride. This is Monday before we flew out, and I'm like, I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, please help me. So I scramble. So I make phone calls. He's like, I was like, Hey, um, I could get. It. I was like, What? what this, this is ridiculous. How am I supposed to get up that way? He said, well, why don't you uh, go up to Newcastle? I was like, oh, there we go. I was like, sweet. So I hung up, started searching again. And the train to or a plane ride to Newcastle was about 500 bucks. And then I was like, all right, that's better than a thousand. I was like, here we go. We, we're working here. It's so dwindling down. It's dwindling. I was like, yes. I called him. I was like, can anybody pick me up in Newcastle? They're like, nah, mate. You have to, uh, you'll have to, uh, rent a car and come from there. I was like, what? It's like, Lord, help me. Okay, fine. I was like, I'll call you back. Click, come back, look it up, rental car for the entire weekend, unlimited miles, everything, 200 bucks. I was like, sweet. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. We got this $200. I was like, cool. I'm going to fly there. Fly to Newcastle, get a rental car, and then go there. And then, so about $700 in, go about 800 with tax. I'm sitting there, I was like, I can't do that. There's no way we can do that. I don't even know how I can do that. So I got thinking, I was like, well, I'll just get a rental car from London and drive all the way up, hit 500 miles, which is <laughs> un another story for another day. That's exactly right. <laughs> they drive on the wrong side of the road, just put it, put it that way. Um, I was mad. So I was like, all right, here we go. I got 300 bucks. Bet. Let's do this. So I was looking at it and I got on Experian. I was able to add it to the original plan or the original, um, trip. So I added the, the car. I was like, awesome. We got everything buttoned up. This is what I'm talking about. We can make $300 work over the hotels. We got the hotels. We can, if we have to, we can walk because we're not that far. We got this. Game on. Wednesday. This is when I lost it. Mm, this is the day before we leave, right? No, we flew out Saturday. Yeah, no, it's just 
the week of where we're leaving. Okay. Yeah, we fly out Saturday. So I'm sitting there getting ready. I'm I'm over here cooking dinner for the kids. Tasha's come back from the house that she's cleaning, about to go to church. You know, I was like, yes, I need some Jesus tonight. This is some good stuff. All right, here we go. She calls me. Vans broke down. Can't start. I'm on the side of 431 in a really bad spot, and I'm barely off the edge of the road. I'm like, what? I was like, no. I'm like, Lord, what in the world? I was like, okay, fine. I'm coming. Let's see what we can do. So I can load the kids up. We get in the car. We go over there. And the whole time that you, I'm waiting for you to get there, I'm just praying that you do not lose your cool. Because I could tell from the way that you, that you hung up that phone, you were already upset. You were worried. You were stressed. Mm -hmm. And I already knew what kind of financial situation we were in. So it was. It sucked. It was bad. Yeah, it was bad. So I was like, man. So I get her, get over there. And the car is doing nothing. No, it's not. not. Turns out, just recently found out, it was a fuel line. Busted out. Up under the tank. Come loose. Ran out of gas. She ain't got no gas in it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so oh lord and so i was like all right fine screw it we can't do anything with it the car's not going anywhere just leave it here so i load the kids up and get tasha in the car and said let's go to church let's go up and sit there and spend time with them let's we need some jesus right now something serious what he forgot was it was <laughs> Oh. It was conference, not at church. It oh. was not a service or a Bible study or anything. So we walk in and All he in- said, it's conference, not great. I'm having money problems and all they want to do is talk about money. I'm like, Lord, help me. Why are you? I'm waiting for Ashton Kuster to jump out and sit there on punk. A little episode of punk going on here. I was like, this ain't right. This is a really messed up. Anyways, I'm I'm really depressed. I'm really jacked up at this moment. So I'm I'm just in my head all the way through, you know. And I'm sitting on the I said, told Tasha to just sit here in the back. I can't even can't deal with it right now. I just want to sit right here. And normally we're like second or third yeah. row from the front. And I'm I have no idea what they talked about during that meeting. I have no clue. The preacher probably thinks I was mad at the world, which. I was just having an intense conversation with Jesus, and we were just sitting there in the back. And I was just praying. I just broke down, and you know, I was crying. I was praying. I was just in heavy prayer all the way through. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I know this is what you told us to do. We had multiple confirmations. I know this ain't because of what we want to do, because I don't even want to go on the trip to begin with half the time. You know, yeah. it's just what it is. And I, the whole hour, I was just dead locked into prayer. And every once in a while, I just put my hand on his on his leg and look at him like we're doing exactly what he told us to do. He's got it. Don't worry about it. He's going to make a way. Yeah. Well, they get up, they get done, and uh, they call us up there because the church knew that we were going to be there. And the church also took up a love offering for us um, a while back, and they gave us six hundred dollars, which went to the plane tickets. Mm-hmm. So. They was like, all right, we're going to pray for you all before you all go because we're going to go see you Sunday. I was like, great, finally, let's Please. get some prayer going. <laughs> let's do this. We get up there and they pray for us. And um, we get done with the prayer. It was a beautiful prayer. And I talked to the preacher. I was like, hey, don't we have a tow truck driver that works here that goes to our church? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we do. I was like, okay, cool, man. That's awesome. Can I get his number? So I called him up and I was like, hey, man. I left him a voicemail. He didn't answer. You know, just my luck. You know, I was just down and out. I was bad. I was, it was, you were in Eeyore mode. Oh, I made Eeyore look happy. Yeah, you did. And uh, he didn't answer. He texted me back. I'm at the ball field with my kids. Um, I was like, oh, sweet. I was like, that's cool, dude. The car's not going anywhere. It's on the side of the road. Um, it's a told him what it was. And he's like, all right, yeah, man, I'll get it whenever we're done. And uh, I'll bring it to your house. I was like, sweet. Drop it off in the bag. So I put my phone in my back pocket and I feel I'm talking to somebody, but I feel it vibrate. I was like, oh, okay, he's calling me back. All right, here we go. I pick it up and I say, hey, man, how you doing? And it's her daddy. And uh, he says, hey, I sold your gun. Um, I need your cash app or your PayPal so I can send this money to you. I'm like, 
who is this? <laughs> you know, I was like, what the world? It's like picking up a sweet tea and you're getting Dr. Pepper. It's completely different. I'm like, that's not what I expected. And uh, which is never it is with Jesus. Guy comes in, moves, something serious. And he's like, yeah, I got your gun sold. 2500 I'm like, he said, that's what you want, right? It's like, <laughs> I'll take anything right now. I was like, yes, that's exactly right. And that's basically half the price of what I wanted for my gun. And I was like, yeah, okay, dude. Boom, send it to him, taken care of. So I have, you know, around less than $100 in my checking account at this point. And we sit there, and by the time we get home and get Buddy gets the van, that money is sent to my account, taken care of. So I'm able to pay him for dropping the truck, the car off, got that taken care of, got online, was able to sit there and pay off everything. We paid off most of the, a uh, bunch of the trips. We could have money left over for the entire trip. It was amazing. And it was just, you know, it's, it broke me down to the point where when I was in prayer, I was like, God, I'm done. I am, I don't know what else to do. I've tried everything. I've done everything that I could. If I had a steering wheel, I would throw it to the altar right now to let you have it because I don't want it. No more. I'm tired of trying to make a way that I can't make. And I was like, this is your way. This is the way you can do it. There's the only way it's going to happen is through you. And like I said, this whole hour in this service, Wednesday night, I'm just, I'm dying back there. I'm pouring my heart out. I'm crying. I'm bawling. And I'm just completely defeated. Had nowhere else to go. Couldn't go anywhere else. Credit was out. I had no more credit anywhere else. But I had a full, fresh debit card ready to roll with Jesus. He had everything we needed. And uh, it took me a while to learn that. And it took me uh, from February to there to May to do that. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Once you get yourself out of your way the Lord, and you let the Lord light your path, that's when things will move. That's when things will change. But you got to get out of the way. You can't be like, well, I'll just hang over the fence a little bit. I'll still play with it, see what we can do. And no, you got to get completely out of your yard like God did one. You can't just look, you can't just say, all right, God, I need your help. But I think that this, this would work a whole lot better. So I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to move this right here. And, mm -hmm. but if you could fill in this gap and this gap, that'd be great, but I can handle this. Um, if you can just take care of this, That's right. you just got to give every bit of it to him. Cause he, he knows what he wants to do to begin with. That's right. And most of the time, a lot of the times when he's waiting, we're waiting and thinks we think that things ought to be taken care of like right then. Most of the time he's saying, just hold on. I'm using this for my glory. Hold on. I'm going to do this in a way that nobody else can say that it was you or that it was this person, or it was because this person did it. It was, it was me. There's no other way that that would have worked if it hadn't have been for me. So just take your hands off of it, leave it alone and let me do what I'm going to do. So other people can see my glory, my power, my provision through this situation. So take your hands off of it. No. But he provides no matter what. That's right. Can't be a backseat driver by no means. No. You got the Proverbs up. Um, so I was using Proverbs 16. Um, 16, 1 through 5. Is probably the best depiction that I could find that ultimately led me down this path and to understand it. And that's, and that was still even after you. This is all the way up to this point. Like, you know, working on yourself is, is hard. It's, you got to relearn everything that you thought you knew. You can't lean on yourself. You got to lean on him. And then we're what, six months into a year, going seven months into the year now? Yeah. And it took from from the GS work on in February in January yeah. till now, just recently, just to understand what full surrender to Christ really is, to understand how to do that and to have the faith to walk in. And that's hard. It's it's really hard, especially with my mindset that I've got. So it goes uh Proverbs fifteen one. 
uh, the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the way, all the ways of the, a man are clear in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. So I like that right there in verse two. You know, we think we know everything. We, we, we know, we know what we know and we don't know crap. And, mm-hmm. but the Lord, when he will sit there where it says, uh, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. He knows what you really mean, what you're really after in your heart, and what you really are diving into. Yeah. And what your mindset is on it, what your true convictions are on it. And you can't hide anything you, from him. No, you can't hide nothing from him. And that's what I'm saying. You have to have that full surrender. You've got to have that full faith. You've got to walk in faith. And it's truly hard, especially in this time and era. And some upbringings is even worse to be able to give that faith to someone that that you truly believe in. But it's hard to give that over. It's hard to surrender that. And like I said, it took me seven months to truly figure that out and understand it. It broke me all the way down, broke me down to the bottom, rock bottom, to get to there. It says, commit thy way commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Do everything you can to for Christ. Whatever you do, you go out in the middle of the day, you go out to the grocery store, gas station, whatever it is. What I've learned is, Lord, do I need to do this? Is this where I need to go? Is this the best place for me to be at? Um, Is this the way you want me to walk? Do you want me to go in here and do this? Should I do this? Write everything by him that says to pray consistently, to pray to him constantly. And that could be with every decision you make. Should I take this phone call? Should I make this phone call? Do I need to call my brother? Do I need to talk to him? Lord, give me guidance. If it's a yes, all right, sweet. God, what do I need to talk to him about? What? How do I need to talk to him? How do I need to talk to this person that's behind the counter or across the counter from me? What can I tell them to lead them to you? How can I be the light that you've called me to be? How can I be the ambassador that you've called me to be for mm-hmm. you? Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for him. Yeah, even the wicked for the days of evil. Every man that is pride or is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Through hands joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. (laughs) Ow. So that's another thing. The fifth one, everyone that is proud proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. That's what that's bad because I just recently learned something and never thought of it this way. There's two types of pride. There's two types you can be proud. You can have that arrogance pride where, oh yeah, look at me. I did this. This was my doings, which I had when I was planning everything. Like, All right, I did this. I did that. I'm, oh yeah, I'm, I'm riding for Christ. I'm doing this. I'm I'm heavy in what I'm doing. I'm always doing this. I'm always moving. I'm always going. And then when everything went bad, I'm always like, why me? Why God? Why this? Why am I hurting? Why did I, did this happen? How can I fix this? How can I go about this? Why that pity? I thought that it should be, you would have showed up by now. I thought that this should be paid off. I thought you were going to provide. I'm not going to have victory. I'm not going to, um, be able to do this. It's a lot of eyes. It's a lot of spiciness right there, but it's truth. It's yeah. what it is. And it took me a while to figure that out. And actually, I realized that over this past weekend at a conference we went to, and uh, he brought that up, and I was like, "Man, this dude is stomping all over my toes." We needed steel toe boots. We didn't have them. Yeah, yeah we had flip flops. We were on the front row too. Yeah, we were. We weren't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> but be careful with your eye uh, and your your complaints. You know, it's it's up to the Lord. The Lord will do it. If you have a good, solid heart with it, a good, solid mind, and you commit everything to him, and you give him complete faith, 
Mm -hmm. 100% all the way through. Do everything you can to walk in Christ. Funny thing is, is these verses, our Bible study this week for Tuesday was Proverbs 16, 1 or 16, 3 is what it was. Commit thy works unto the Lord. And the Bible study thoughts. that you had with the, the men in your club. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so my Bible study that we have for the club. It was uh, it's, it's funny how God works. I was sitting here and uh, we were getting all this stuff together, and he was like, "Oh, he's he's hitting hard." And I was like, "What's going on?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, this is exactly what we used in the Bible study with the men on Tuesday night." And I was like, "Oh, here we go, here we go." I was like, "Man, look at Jesus just having a field day over here, just playing around, having a big time." Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you were you were talking about um. Well, I'll just read the verses. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But here is what I like. So, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We can say that he's my helper because there's no possible way that we could have fixed the mess that we were in before we went over there. There's no way we could have even left with what we had in our bank account. There ain't no way we'd have made it. <laughs> we would have been eating, Ramen eating saltine. Noodles. No, we would have had saltine crackers sitting in front of the Eiffel Tower praying for God to move. And we would have had, and there's no way we would have been able to, the divine appointments that God had for us over there, there's no way we would have been able to bless the people that we met or to do what he had for us to do over there if he hadn't have moved that's right. moved it wasn't anything that we did if god will come in i mean just like she said we wouldn't have been able to do half the stuff we wouldn't have had the car ride that we had the no eight hour ride with some of the most epic men of god you know we were packed in and like sisters Saturday. and sisters we were riding <laughs> In a little van, beautiful, on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> so, but the conversations we have all the way up through there was was awesome. The people we met in Paris that we was able to speak to and talk to, yeah, it was, it was, it was life changing. I mean, we we got a whole new aspect, a whole new outlook on the world on how we do things here and what how blessed we are and how we take things for granted so easily and it, it blows my mind it really does and then you've also got um this is one of my favorite verses about provision and how god does provide is luke twelve twenty two through 32 um, and he said unto his disciples therefore i say unto you take no thought for your life what you shall eat neither for the body what you shall put on the life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you is taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe ye? O ye of little faith. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things. Let me do that. Let me read that one more time. Seek ye, seek, mm -mm, sorry, and seek not ye what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. So spicy. That, that, okay, I'm just seeing this. That's a commandment. That is not a, that's not a suggestion. Mm -hmm. That's sure. not something that he says it might be a good idea if you did it. I never saw that. But that's a declarative sentence. That's a command. And seek not ye what ye shall eat. 
or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes. He. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you put him first. You seek him first. How many times have we looked at our bank account and like, how in the world are we even going to be able to get groceries for this next week? I don't understand it. And then honestly, we have more than we need. We have leftovers. We have, by the time that, the paycheck is spent. The bills are paid. But yet, we still have food in our freezer. We have. It might not be exactly what we want to eat. We're not going out to eat. And we're not doing all these different things. I'll tell you what that is. That's a blessing that the Lord will send. It's like the uh, um, you know, Elijah and the old woman. The bottom of the barrel. <laughs> scooping up. It's just enough for for the day. But what it is, is... We have a brother that um, we know that's part of the club. And like she said, we're check to check. Like I said at the beginning, check to check all the way through. And sometimes we don't have money for food or a lot of food or whatnot. And it's just enough for gas to get us to and from work where we need to be. Well, we got a guy that's part of another ministry, um, the Giving Back Foundation at the time. He's, they're no longer affiliated with that at the moment. But they specialize in feeding people and they get all sorts of shipments in and i call him up and actually he reached out to me he's like hey man you yeah. need some food i'm <laughs> sorry i'm sitting there like crunching on a ramen noodle thing i'm exaggerating i was not doing that i gotta cook it first but <laughs> anyways so yeah, i was like yeah man i do he's like well come up to the warehouse and which is about 40 minutes from the house. You know, we're tight on money and all this. And we're trying to figure out how we're going to get food for the next week. And uh, we get over there and uh, he's like, I want to show you this. You're going to really, this is going to trip you out. And he's been telling us for a while, like, it ain't that big. This joker has like a whole Walmart in there. It's a beautiful thing. But where he was able to give us food. He was able to give us what we needed, everything. Anything that we, the stuff that we needed at that point in time, he's like, here, take it. In abundance, not yeah. just one little right. thing here, not this here, but an abundance of it. The Lord will make a way. Commit yourself to Him. Give it to Him. Throw your hands up. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask mm -hmm. or think. And He did. That's that's awesome, right there. And then, I mean, um, a lot of times we think, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that, but are they really needs? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4.19. But even just this past week, Joshua is sitting in the back explaining to Ruby that what she was wanting was a want. It wasn't a need. There's a difference. And I mean, just us, you know, finally, and we're, we're still working on it. We're, we're not to the point of, you know, we don't worry about anything anymore. Oh, yeah, no. um, we're still flesh. We still, you know, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something that we are mindfully working on. Yeah. But it's, he supplies your needs. You might not have everything you want. You might not get to do everything that you want to do. No. But... If you will seek him first, put him first, and take your hands off of stuff and let him do what he wants to do, it's amazing what he does. That's exactly right. And, I mean, and the Bible tells us not to, where is that scripture? I had it topped off, and I don't, there it is. It's Proverbs 23 and 4. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Yeah. 
cease from thine own wisdom. In other words, quit thinking about it. Get rid of that I. Mm-hmm. And don't, you don't live to work. You work to live. Yeah. You're not supposed to, the Bible tells us not to labor to be rich. So, and the money's not ours to begin with. Yeah. It's his. He gives it to us. Nothing that we have is really our own. And that's another thing, too. So the entire time we're going through this, ever since GS Warcon, I wasn't a tither, like, at all. Like, I, that was my money. We we hungry. We got, That's what got us through. But this, ever since February, we tied. I tied to three different people. I had three. I split my ties three ways to, to people that I've prayed for in the Lord. Showed me who I needed to put it on, and blessed with them. And uh, it ain't much, but it's it's more than enough. And when and, I was working, I did my ties. We had separate yeah. accounts. I would put, I had my ties out of my account, but what he made and what he brought in that was completely separate. And I didn't, honestly, I didn't really ever ask what you did with it. I just left it alone. That's something we didn't communicate about then. Yep. Yes, it's growing. But all through this, every every Wednesday I got paid. What was when my check came through? It was every, it was on the, every second Wednesday or every other week, in other words, bi-weekly. I would, I'd send it out. That would be the first thing I did, no matter what was going on, where we were at. Usually as we come home from church, check hit the account, boom, sent it out. That was the First thing I did with every every one of my times mm-hmm. were my checks, and it, it honestly it put us in a bind a few times. Well, actually, a lot of the times, like, like I really could have used that, but it took me a while to grow and understand that it's it's not for me. It's for the kingdom. It's for God to give with a cheerful heart. Mm-hmm. And there was times in there that I had to stop and rebuke myself because I didn't have that. I had to I had to push that away and have to pray and and get back right because I was way off base on a lot of things, and uh, but even through everything that we were going through, our tides were going out, our check to checks, all that. Shoot, if you really want to get big into it, you want to check it. I could throw some bank statements to it. We could get it right. <laughs> I should have prayed not to check the rabbit over here, but. Anyways, but that that's what makes a good Bible study half the time yeah, when really me and is. you were doing it. It's yeah. we we chase a lot of different things down, but you can also tell a lot about a person by how they handle their money. Um, yeah. In Psalms, um, Psalms thirty seven and twenty one, it's the wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. It's you you can tell. A lot about people by how they handle their money, how they give, where they give. Um, like we know, we know a couple of people that, you know, they they are very, very financially stable. They have a lot of different things, but if you ever ask them to give to something, that they ain't they ain't doing it. It's just it tells a lot about where a person's heart is as well. Yeah. Um, and, and that's also, I, I believe on that, is spiritual growth. Absolutely. Some people are nowhere near where they they need to be in the Bible. No. Some people don't have a bunch of Bibles. I mean, we've, I mean, got, we've got, we got, we got that one. We yeah. got this one. This one. <laughs> yeah, these things ain't This dusty. one. No, the, I mean, look it's, at this. Look at this one. You can tell from the cover on that one. The pages are falling out of this one. Um, my actual cover fell off of the one that I got in high school. I, I mean, they're written in. They're these are yeah. they're used. And I, I say that not to oh, look at me. I don't no, where I am. absolutely I say it not. To be more along as a spur. You know, iron sharpens iron, as one man sharpens another. That is sometimes it's not a easy conversation or easy truth to oh, tell somebody not. sometimes you're gonna hurt somebody's feelings and you need to 
sometimes you've got to rebuke people. You got to look. This is where it's at, and in the right manner. In the yes, and with a loving heart. Can't do it just spitefully. Be like, oh, look at me! I've got all my Bibles. You know, no. we're, we're stacking Bibles up like it's a Jenga thing over here, which we probably could, but it's it's not that. Not that way. That's not the. That's not how my heart's trying to say on this. No. It is to encourage others to get in the Word daily. Have that daily Word and prayer time, and stay in it. Get mm-hmm. in the Word. Ask God what He wants to reveal to you, where He wants to reveal it to you. I mean, just start flipping the Bible open. If it's been a while since you read, just drop the Bible on the table where it opens up. Send it. They'll chase a rabbit because Lord knows I'll end up in. Starting Genesis, and I'll be jumping all over the place. And I am for Revelation, was sitting there like, Oh Lord, it's about to be rapture. <laughs> but once the Lord puts it on your heart, and the more you pray, pray is one of the is really big. Praying to God, asking Him, talking to Him, getting to know Him, having that personal relationship with Christ is honestly one of the main things you've got to have. You've got to have that. Personal being saved and knowing your savior. That's it. Knowing He's who the God. only little G God that you, you don't see anywhere where Muhammad or any of these other so called gods wanted a personal relationship with any of their followers. The only one the only the only one that wanted a personal relationship and pursued pursued people was Jesus and he still wants that personal relationship with you. He still wants to hear from you. He, he is, he's waiting for it. He longs for it. He, he loves you. And we're not saying any of this to be like, we've got it all together or to (laughs) make it out that, you know, we, we know what we're doing because we're definitely still learning. We're still growing. We, have we're just sharing with you what has helped us and what we're learning and and how God provides yeah. over and over and over again. There's an old song that mama liked to sing that God likes to work when nothing else will. Yeah. I'll tell you this with going back on uh with the Bibles, you know, once you once you accept Christ and you start that personal relationship, you've got to have discipleship. Yes. You've got to have somebody, a church, a family, a wife, someone that can spur you along and move you in a direction where you'll go away from your old life, go away from your old vices and your old sins. It's not going to be an immediate thing. It ain't going to be day one. Boom. <laughs> I'm cold turkey on everything. <laughs> Sanctified. No. <laughs> it's Lord may God I ain't putting handcuffs on God. He might have that one person. Lord, that's on him. But with me it took a while. It took a long time. It took a very long time. Saved in two thousand and ten and didn't get right in and understand what being a spiritual leader of my house was until it was 2022, about February time frame. Yeah. And uh, it was the first time I actually openly and out loud prayed with my wife and prayed for her. And just to humble myself to do that, not even understanding what it was, just, just doing it to get in to start, to get that habit going. I'd never done that. And to I'll tell you this, the one of the biggest things was that I told her, I thanked her for her carrying the torch as a spiritual leader of this house and understanding that, you know, I wasn't there. I wasn't able to, but she drug us. She's the one that the Lord put on us to move and get to church every Sunday, which I did not want to. And whenever we moved up here, she's the one that pushed us getting over here and getting it going, going Wednesday nights, Sunday nights, Sundays. Anytime that door was open, she was the one, Brought in a program going, getting going. And then uh, then I found the club and I was discipled. I had men that literally broke me down and tore down the old ways that I thought, my thinking, so my knowings. And 
showed me how it, being a a godly husband and a spiritual leader and you know, what that really is and how to do that and it wouldn't have been for i would probably wouldn't have done any of that if it wasn't for her being consistent in her faith to make sure that we were constantly fed in any manner even if it's just sprinkling on us we got it but finding the people finding a good godly church a bible believing church that you can find like-minded believers that will build you and love you for who you are no matter what it is and take you to levels that you've never thought you would even go i ride with disciple christian motorcycle club and we minister to the one percent then we minister to the men that come to our club we are to disciple men to have a daily word and prayer time and to support the one percent world in prayer that's our mission and we disciple more men that I've, I've ever seen that has been turned away from this world from christianity christianity looked them in the face and was like no we don't want you you're not my people christianity no make sure that that's in quotation yeah, marks the the church the the religious crowd yeah there's a difference in religious and relationship yeah and we see this all the time we, i see it constantly where men are just completely broken down it's like i will never set foot in a church ever again in my life because of the way i was treated the way that i was looked at the way they talked to me not doing it i rather really sit here with people that won't judge me and they'll sit with me and that's where we come in we go we live a godly life in front of them we don't do anything of the world and live by example yeah we live by example we and show love them. them that's the biggest thing we love them we we go there we have a big time with them we talk to them and it's, it's a beautiful thing that's there's more testimonies that we can go into of people that's come from the one percent world people that's just come from just the independent area and god is great once you start doing and moving for the lord he'll put you on paths you'll never expect to be going down me suits me just fine to sit there in the room there and play xbox all night and all day and not do anything that's honestly my easy way that's what i want to do but God, but God shows me what I need to do, what I'm called to do, and where my mission is, and what he has brought me to this earth for, and it is to get to the people that have been turned away, because I've turned them away, I've done it, and the Lord's like, ha ha, now I see what you've done, now, now you gotta fix it, and that's where I'm at, so I'll quit rambling. <laughs> I think it's been good. Yeah. We definitely ran a few rabbits and got off of um, our main topic of <laughs> financial provision. But I think it was fabulous. And we just, we let the Holy Spirit lead. That's exactly what we did. And that's what we wanted to do to begin with. Um, none of this has been to put on anything or to show what we know. It's just to dig in and to share with other people. Things that, you know, normally are just glossed over or you just sort of try to find out on your own. But um, we definitely dove into deep waters today <laughs> while we were studying. Um, but thank you so, so much for sticking around. I know this was one of the our longer podcasts, and but I think it was great. And I enjoyed it. Um, but... I would, Go ahead. I would encourage anyone that's listening, any man, to study with your wives. Make it a daily habit. Pray for your wives. Outside of your study, pray for them. Openly, out loud, with them. Humble yourself down to them. And pray for them. It might not be easy at first. It's not. It's going to suck. It's going to be the most embarrassing thing, most uh, shyest thing you ever do in your life. So the first few times, it's like... Did I really just do that? <laughs> so, but the Lord will, he'll move, he'll move in mighty ways for you. Once you start praying with your wife, the Lord says, the Bible says that we're one flesh. Well, you, 
you ain't going to sit there and spite your left arm for your right arm, are you? You're going to take care of them both. So make sure you're getting the word with your wife, study with your wife, and pray for your wife. Be that epic husband that you can be, that man and guy that you're called to be. Good. Well, I truly, truly enjoyed it. And I have a feeling that we're going to be doing this a, a little bit more often. Um, we'll just start st- doing all of our studies online. <laughs> That'd be a whole lot of podcasts. But um, thank you so much for sticking with us. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will post um, in the comments some of the verses. That way, again, just like I usually say, go back and double check us. Um, go back and study um, and look it up yourself. Make sure that it is in context. Double check us. Um, cause we are flesh. We falter. We fail. Yeah. We don't always get it right. Um, and we do not want to be stumbling blocks, but do that. Um, don't just do that with me, but do it with your pastor, with your, um, who you're listening to on YouTube, who you're listening to on Spotify. Go back and double check them. Figure out for yourself. Search the word. Um, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Make sure you know know the truth so you, you're not led astray. Um, but again, thank you so much for being with us. And I look forward to sitting down with y'all next week on another episode of Wading Through Deep Waters. Thank you, Logan.